everyone, my name is Madison and welcome back to my channel. About a month ago, I purchased the brand new MacBook Pro with the M1 chip and today I'm so excited to tell y'all more about my thoughts and opinions and just what I love, hate, and have mixed feelings about with this new computer. There are so many different opinions and it definitely varies person by person and what you're going to be using this computer for that will influence and sway how you feel about it. I am an engineering student and I also love making content and videos for y'all so my primary uses of this computer is for things like MATLAB, Zoom because class is online right now, um, write-ups, coding, VS Code, things of that sort, as well as iMovie. I do not use Final Cut Pro, but I have been mind blown with the capabilities of iMovie on this computer. One of my favorite features, of course, um, so I will be sure to talk about that in this video and just give you all my thoughts and opinions. Let's go. Of course, there's all the basics that are just so amazing with this computer. Of course, it is a lot lighter, it's a lot thinner, the speakers are better. Um, it has different ports and things like that. Y'all already know that jazz. A few things that I did not think I'd appreciate as much as I do though are the quality of it. I cannot tell you how nice this like, what's that called? Is it retina? I don't know. The screen quality is so good. It is so nice. I feel like things are not nearly as like fuzzy or blurry as they used to be just because the quality is so nice. The colors are so vibrant and nice. It's just so appealing. I cannot tell you how night and day the camera on my old MacBook Pro versus this one are. I went from zoom on this old thing that made me look like just fuzzy and dirty and blurry and the lighting was always horrible. Um, and I did my best to try to like clean it a lot, try to make the lighting in my room as good as it could be just for like interviews and things like that. But having this camera that literally looks on the order of like an iPhone quality, like an older iPhone quality is crazy to me. So I have really, really loved that and really appreciated that just because again, everything's online right now and I really don't see interviews moving that far offline in the future. I feel like Zoom and remote interviews are gonna be a thing of the future and are here to stay just because of how convenient it is, um, as opposed to, to try to meet with the hiring manager or do it over the phone. You may as well just sit down, have somewhat of a face-to-face -face conversation with them over Zoom. So having a high quality camera can really just up your appeal, up your presentation, and just make yourself look a bit more professional and put together. Obviously, I just look so professional right now. My hair is like all scraggly and I'm in a sweatshirt, but it's really cold here. It's the middle of April and it literally snowed yesterday, so we're thriving. First things first, one of my favorite features of this computer is iMovie, like I mentioned. I was running all my iMovie and editing all my videos on the 2015 MacBook Pro, and now that thing works pretty well still to this day. There are a few little glitches, it definitely was dying, but all things considered, it worked fine. Now, just for some context, if I were to export a 10 minute video on that computer, I would estimate it would take about 20 to 25 minutes to export. If it was having a really good day and I did not have any Safari, Firefox, and a single other thing open, it would maybe take about 10 to 15. But if I had my standard, you know, email, Google Calendar, that sort of thing pulled up, even just like Spotify, it would take significantly longer. Upwards of two to two and a half times as long. Now on this computer, I would say it takes about one fifth or one tenth of the time. So if I have a 10 minute video, I kid you not, it will be like finished exporting in between like 30 seconds and two minutes. It blows my mind. Honestly, just having iMovie download and export my videos so fast and efficiently without causing my computer to overheat, be loud, have the fan turn on, anything like that has been such a game changer as opposed to me having to prop up my computer and angle it so that I can still get air to the fan and help it cool down to hopefully let that help video export faster. I don't have to do any of that. I also don't have to worry about exporting a video while maybe I'm on Zoom with a friend or running a ton of other applications that might cause them to crash. I've also found in the past that my videos crashed and failed to export a lot more frequently on my old computer. And in fact, I haven't had any have that issue now. 
Granted, sometimes that happens because of things like a lack of storage, but a very big part can be your computer overheating and not being able to process everything at once. The processor and just like all of the different specs of this computer are amazing and I have the base model. Another thing I really want to mention, especially with Zoom University and everything, now I know we are kind of fading out of that, which is so encouraging. Um, CU has announced that the majority of our classes will be in person next semester, which is so exciting. So I have all but one of my classes is, is in person and that class I specifically chose to take the asynchronous version of it just for convenience factor with me working and things like that. But um, when you're on Zoom and you're trying to run MATLAB and share your screen with your partners and things like that, it takes such a huge toll on your computer. So again, this goes back to the whole running multiple applications at once. This computer handles it like a pro. It is honestly mind boggling. Um, every little thing, I could have 30 different Firefox tabs open. I could have a MATLAB, iMovie, Notes, Safari, Zoom. I could have everything open and my computer would not show any sign of wear. On my old computer, if I had everything closed and only chose to open Zoom, it would still l buzz and whir and just the fan would be so loud. Granted, I'm comparing everything to a very old model, but nevertheless, this computer is wonderful. One of the other really big things I wanted to highlight was how much I use the touch bar. I really questioned how useful this would be, how much I would use it, how handy I would find it, if it ever get in the way, ever be annoying, anything like that. I do have mixed feelings about this, just for some few small factors, but I love it overall. I really love how it will suggest emojis, it'll suggest words, it'll suggest um, maybe things you want to do or access. You can even like scroll and see how far you are on like a Spotify song. So many things are just so 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 useful on it. The few things that I do get somewhat annoyed with, I am constantly changing the brightness and my volume and now at least my touch bar doesn't automatically show those so I have to hit about two or three buttons to actually get it to give me the option to lower my volume or my brightness which isn't a huge deal just on my old computer it was just one button right there easy and done. Again this does come at a cost because um, I am paying to have to maybe hit a few more buttons to turn my volume up but as opposed to me having to hit like 25 to put an emoji I'll take it. The touch bar also has a refresh button, a back button, and a forward button. Now this is where my mixed feelings come in because I feel like these tools can be really really handy but I cannot tell you how many times I have accidentally hit the Siri button in the middle of a presentation, I've accidentally hit the refresh button in the middle of running Jupyter Hub and having not saved my code that happened yesterday or me just hitting the back button when I really don't mean to. It sometimes gets in a way, granted I'm not the best typer, I can type relatively fast but I really only use these three or six fingers so my hands are moving around a lot more than they would if I actually knew how to type well with all ten fingers, eight fingers plus thumbs, people are gonna come for me. Um, because of that, my hands move around a lot more, which makes me a bit more clumsy and causes me to hit those buttons I don't mean to a little bit more often. But that comes at a cost. Again, overall, I think those features are really, really nice. So do not let that deter you from getting this computer. After having this computer a month and having talked to my friends, there were a few things I was a little bit worried about. One of my friends had warned me that MATLAB doesn't run very well on the M1 chip. And he must have been making something up or maybe something was just happening but I have found MATLAB to run perfectly oh my goodness it runs so well on this computer on my old computer that actually had an Intel chip where MATLAB was made for the Intel chip it was a bit slower um, it just crashed more often I was always having issues with it and that was honestly a really big part in me wanting to get a new computer because I use MATLAB so often 
this computer runs matlab so well i cannot tell you it runs so fast the imaging is so clear i have never had it crash um i'm not getting errors obviously some errors come from your actual code some errors come from like the way matlab is configured on your computer and honestly maybe me just like restarting fresh was really good um to have everything up to date and done well and things like that but um I love it and it runs so well. There are a few little things that I don't love about this computer, but that I can definitely live with. I think it just comes with it being a new chip. There's always gonna be little bugs and errors. And this is a relatively new computer and chip. So it maybe needs an update in the near future. I've only really found two things. One of them actually impacts my life in one way or another. The other one is just me being petty. Um, I'll talk about the petty one first. For some reason, when I go to hit force quit, nine times out of 10, I'm doing this right now to see. Of course it doesn't do it now. Nine times out of 10, I go to force quit, the icon is messed up. So it'll say Firefox, Notes, Safari, Zoom, Finder, iMovie, whatever, and it'll all have like the Safari icon. It won't actually show like the Spotify icon or the iMovie one. Again, this is nothing major. There's just obviously like a little bug that's causing the icons to be so screwed up. Um, again, doesn't impact anything. Not sure why it's doing that. I'm not really complaining because it's not that big of a deal. I just do find it odd. Um, and maybe it was just something that was overlooked, but I'd like to not think that something as simple as the icons getting messed up would have an impact or could lead to other things working poorly. I like to read into things. So if one little simple minuscule thing isn't working, it makes me think, well, what else isn't working? What else is broken? What else is like not awesome? Um, again, nothing major, but it does get my gears turning. Now, the only real thing that I've realized actually causes some slowness within my computer um, and takes some time is searching for files. Now, I don't have 100,000 files, but I am a student. I do have a lot of stuff on there. Um, I do have pretty much all of my files from my old computer on this as well. But when I go to like add a resume to an internship application and I search for that resume name, it A, will take about two minutes to actually load and B, half the time it doesn't actually let me click on it. Um, maybe even more than that. Um, I can like sit there and try to click on it and it just doesn't work. And if I like click and wait like another two minutes, maybe it'll load and then it won't even let me hit like import or okay or whatever it says. Maybe it says done. Regardless, at this point, I usually just resort to scrolling through all of my files to actually find what I'm looking for as opposed to searching for it. Because searching just really causes it to be slow and almost feels like it freezes my computer. Um, it just does not work nearly as well as I wish it did. Um, again, nothing major. It just takes a little bit more time and sometimes it is aggravating. My biggest fear with this is that I'm gonna be in the middle of a timed exam trying to like upload my exam to grade scope or something like that. I'm thinking about this because I have an exam in like five days and I'm worried that this is gonna happen. Um, but I am worried that I'm gonna go to search for a file and I'm gonna sit there running out of time. It won't let me find it or search it. And then instead I'll end up taking two or three minutes to scroll through, try to find that file, try to find what folder and folders that's in. Um, just gets a little tedious. But thank you all so, so, so much for watching today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it and I really appreciated y'all listening, hanging out with me. Um, again, I love this computer. If y'all have any more questions about how I use it as an engineering student, things I don't like about it, that sort of thing, I would love to make more content on this. I realized um, y'all really enjoy like my more techie content with my iPad, my computer, things like that. And I find it really interesting. I've learned a lot um, just over the years of having all my different devices. And I understand that there is a lot of thought that goes into what sort of devices engineering students use, whether they need to CAD model, run MATLAB, code, things like that a lot. So I hope y'all enjoyed. Please feel free to give me any other video ideas. I love you all so much and I will see you in my next video. Bye.